Well, he put martial arts on the world stage and broke down many barriers for Asian actors. Bruce Lee was in his prime, a fighting fit young man when he died a sudden and mysterious death. And now more than four decades on, a new book is shedding light on his extraordinary life. He's being celebrated in this biography called Bruce Lee, A Life. Matthew Polly wrote the book and he joins us now from New York. Matthew, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for having me on. More than 40 years after Bruce Lee's death, <coughs> why is his legacy uh, so enduring and so important, do you think? Uh, because he's the first Asian American to ever star in a Hollywood movie, and he's responsible for bringing more, uh, introducing more Westerners to Asian culture than any other person in history. I mean, he was fantastically charismatic. How was he able to bring Kung Fu uh, to the Western world? A fairly obscure martial arts, suddenly everyone wants to know about it. It's completely mainstream. Well, I think part of it was he was a dancer. He was the cha-cha champion of Hong Kong. And so he brought a kind of rhythm. He was the Barishnikov of Kung Fu. And he brought a rhythm and a, and a style that no one had ever seen before. Even Chinese martial artists didn't perform martial arts like Bruce Lee. At the height of his fame, America was fighting in the Vietnam War and a few day, a decades earlier, Pearl Harbor was bombed by Japan. Just how hard was it for an Asian-American actor to get recognition in Hollywood? Basically, it was impossible. Um, every one of his friends, and he was friends with the top stars, Steve McQueen was one of his students, James Coburn, they all told him that Bruce Lee couldn't be a star because no American audience, Western audiences wouldn't accept an Asian as a hero. And so he was fighting essentially impossible odds. And the only reason he succeeded is because he went back to Hong Kong and made so much money there that Hollywood had to uh, put him on film. Bruce Lee gave Chuck Norris his, a role in his movie, Way of the Dragon, and then apparently Chuck Norris never ever worked with him again. Why was that? <laughs> That's because uh, Chuck didn't like losing to Bruce Lee on film. No way. Uh, <laughs> Chuck was very prideful. But the two of them were very good friends. Um, in fact, when Bruce left uh, America, he told his student, Steve McQueen, that Chuck Norris was the best person to train with other than him. And so Chuck said, I will do one movie and lose to you, but I'll never do another movie where I'm not the good guy. Can we talk a little bit about his um, sudden death? Because this was a man who was completely in the prime of his health. Um, he was fit and uh, it devastated the people of Hong Kong so much that uh, uh, the Hong Kong government set up an inquiry into the cause of his death. His death was a, there was a cover up about where he died. Uh, and so there was a huge conspiracy scandal that surrounded it in Hong Kong. And the government was forced to open a coroner's inquest to inquire into it. Uh, their conclusion was he died from a allergic reaction to aspirin. But in researching my book, I came up with a new theory. Uh, one of the things they overlooked was uh, several months prior to his death, he had the sweat glands under his armpits surgically removed. Oh. And the day he died was the hottest day of the month in Hong Kong. Oh. And so I think it was heat stroke that killed him. Why did he have those sweat glands removed? Because he was on screen with his shirt off half the time and he, he, he didn't think uh, dank pits looked good on screen. What were some of the other conspiracy theories that were swirling around at the time? Oh, there was everything from it was ninjas who killed him to the triads poisoned him to there was a curse put on his family that had gotten to him. Um, all of those, of course, are uh, unscientific. The only two scientific theories are allergic reaction to aspirin and heat stroke. The theory that uh, the family was cursed uh, gained a lot of mileage after his son Brandon was killed on set during The Crow. That Indeed. was so devastating. Yes, that was a, a terrible, terrible uh, accident. They were basically cutting corners and they hadn't checked the gun that was being used in a scene and it had a slug still stuck in it. And when the actor pointed at him and pulled the trigger, the blank shot the slug into Brandon. So a terrible tragedy. <sighs> One of Bruce Lee's closest friends was actress Sharon Tate, who was, of course, murdered by the Manson family. But at one stage, her husband, Roman Polanski, actually believed Bruce was her killer. Why was that? Uh, <clears throat> Bruce Lee was uh, Rowan Polanski's instructor. Uh, and at the murder scene, they had found a pair of horn-rimmed glasses. And Roman Polanski believed it belonged to the killers. And one day, Bruce, during a lesson, casually said, you know, I lost my glasses. And for a very brief moment, Roman Polanski was sure that maybe Bruce Lee was the killer. So he offered to go to an eyeglasses store with him and to buy him a new pair of glasses. They got there. Bruce 
ordered the glasses, gave the clerk his prescription, and Roman Polanski breathed this huge sigh of relief because it wasn't the same as the killers at uh, the Manson murders. Gee, for a man who died so young, he certainly lived a lot of life. But Bruce Lee, a life is out now. It's a fascinating read. Matthew Polly, thank you very much for your time. Thanks so much for having me. Okay, in just a moment, we are calling a winner in our...